for this week, we've been looking at um, bereavement and how poetry and literature can help people come to terms with loss. So we, we, we've talked about the opening scene of Hamlet and that, that sense in Hamlet when um, his, his stepfather and his mother, they're telling him to move on. You know, this thing about moving on, that it's not appropriate to grieve mm. for too long. Yeah. Um, and the sort of sense of frustration because everybody's got their own timeline for grief. Um, and grief can suddenly come back and hit you. And, and one of our other texts is Surprised by Joy, where Wordsworth feels guilty because he suddenly feels happy again. He feels bad about feeling happy because he's grieving for the loss of a child. So can you just talk a little bit about your own experience of bereavement and how poetry helped or didn't help? Sure, yeah. Um, so I was, I was bereaved as a child. I was, I was 13, but I... Um, I actually thought I was quite grown up, as you do when you're 13, and so I only recently realised I was a brief child. And so I suppose the timeline can be quite a lot faster, things move quickly, but as when you're only 13, and in some ways you're thinking about the loss of your father, and in some ways you're thinking about the disco in two weeks' time. But mm -hmm. um, it, it hit me out very, very hard. He'd been ill for 10 years, and um, uh, poetry came, came into the equation because... Uh, I was, well, I was in English class. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to uh, cure cancer. And that was, that was what I was going to do. Because Dad had died of cancer. I thought, right, I'll sort it out, sort it out, save the world. Um, but meanwhile, I had to do the GCSE. So I was sitting there and we had this anthology. And uh, we, we were looking, the poem we were told to look at that, that, that day was uh, called A Valediction Forbidding Morning by John Donne. And my ears pricked up. I thought, OK, this is a poem about, about mourning. Maybe, maybe it will help. Because I had this strange complex of feelings. So you're talking about Hamlet. There's, sort of, there's no timeline. And there's also no, no sense of how one should behave. And I was very confused by my feelings of, of feeling very angry, very, very sad, very alone. And like I needed to be grown up and being told I had to be grown up. So I looked at this poem called The Valediction for Bidding Mourning. Um, and we read it. And I found it extraordinarily helpful. Um, should I, shall I read it? Or yeah, should we talk please. About it? No, or could you read it for us? We'd, yeah. love, we'd love to have you read it. Um, because it's a strange poem, because it's called A Valediction for the Bidding Morning, but it's actually, it's actually a love poem. Uh, so, as virtuous men pass mildly away and whisper to their souls to go, while some of their sad friends do say, the breath goes now, and some say, no. So let us melt and make no noise, no tear floods, nor sigh tempest smooth, to a profanation of our joys, to tell the laity of our love. Moving of the earth brings harms and fears, men reckon what it did and meant, but trepidation of the spheres, though greater far, is innocent. Dull, sublunary lovers love, whose soul is sense, cannot admit of absence, because it doth remove the thing which elemented it. But we, by a love so much refined, that ourselves know not what it is, into assured of the mind, care less eyes, lips, and hands to miss. Our two souls, therefore, which are one, though I must go, endure not yet a breach, but an expansion, like gold to airy thinness beat. If they be two, they are two so, as stiff twin compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show to move, but doth, if the other do. And though it in the centre sit, yet, when the other far doth roam, it leans and hearkens after it, and grows erect as that comes home. Such wilt thou be to me, who must, like the other foot, obliquely run. Thy firmness makes my circle just and makes me end where I begun. And I just loved it. I just loved it. And I think I got, when I read it, it must have been 13 and a half or so, I think I got um, that it was about we're apart but we're together. I got that. I got that, and that, that helped, because I miss my dad so awfully. Um, but it's actually it's, it's, the other, it's, a, 
It's, it's a poem about a bloke going on a jolly, really. He's like, <laughs> OK, like, so I'm off around the world, and don't worry, don't worry, I'm still with you. And so I also got this is very clever. Um, and so it's, it's he's saying, and he makes all these comparisons, because he's, he's, he's talking about, so I'm going away, and it's like gold. We, we're together like the way gold is stretched and beaten out, or we're together like twin compasses. compasses. Yeah. I love that image. And that's quite saucy, twin stiff compasses. We're together like that, or we're together like a breach, or we're together like a man leaving his friends as virtuous men pass mildly away, or we're together like a man leaving his soul. Mm. And so it was all these, and I think one of the things I found helpful, apart from the message, which is you can be together and apart, was the idea that um, it was the puzzling. It was a puzzling out. It's, it was like an algebraic equation or a crossword puzzle. Or I'm a child of the 70s, like a Rubik's Cube. You had to figure it. And that in the puzzling, I found that very... It, it, was, it, 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 was, uh, it was... It was some sort of, it offered me some sort of composure or something to work on or work with, to have to be patient with, the, with myself and with the poem. Did you first read? Did you read it aloud? Did your teacher go through it with you? Or was it... Do you remember? We must have read it aloud, mm. and she must have gone through it with me, because I was looking at it again last night before I came to talk to you, and I thought, this is a tricky poem. It's still just puzzling it out. So, yeah. But I think, I think you're quite right about we can over intellectualize and I think the thing that first got me about this poem was probably the way it sounded. And it's this mm. very, mm. very calm, as virtuous men mm. pass mine. It's very measured, yeah. isn't it? It's very, very measured. measured. And maybe... and it's That was comforting, surely. That yeah. was comforting, that rhythm. That rhythm. And it's probably it's one of the few poems I really do know half of it off by heart because that sense of holding it with me and it, the rhythm holds, as it's holding itself together, perhaps it was a way of holding me together a bit. It's a love poem you've chosen. And I love the fact that you've chosen a love poem. Because when I first had you... Yeah. Talking about it, I thought, oh, that's an odd choice for bereavement. But it's not an odd mm. choice for bereavement because it's about love. Yeah. Now, thank you for, yes, you actually rationalised, I thought this is a very odd poem to have, because it, it changed everything for me, this poem, in the sense that I thought, well, that made me feel that much better that perhaps I won't go and try and find a cure for cancer and stand in the biology lab, perhaps I'll just carry on reading poems, and now I teach literature. And, but it, it is, and, and, and it is, it's about, it's about loss, but it, this poem is about um, the separation of, of deep love and passion and being heartbroken, yes, so you're, you're absolutely right in that. So over the years, you read it when you were 13 and it helped mm. you and it was a form of therapy. How do you, and how has that changed or developed or stayed the same or over the years? I think one of the ways, maybe the only way one can go on after a terrible, terrible loss is to find some way of, um, well, I'll speak for me, of some, find mm. some way of keeping that person mm. with you, of finding some way of thinking I haven't, haven't, lost my father entirely and, and one of the ways this this poem spoke to that all is is actually through John Donne I mean you can hear his voice mm. through this and you have to work but you have to work a bit to hear it but if you if you listen you can see that he's he's quite saucy he's mm. quite funny uh you do you're a bit suspicious about why does she have to stay home while he's off there if we think about this poem being we're apart but together mm. which is still together with John Donne and I think that sense mm. that a voice from so long ago could feel so close to me was helpful. And that's what still stays with me when I read poetry. Um, I think it was Freud who said that writing is the voice of an absent person. And we always miss, we miss mm. people, but you, you, when you read back, you can hear, you, they come back to you. They come back to you. And so that's the sense of what this, this poem does for me, is the sense of we don't ever entirely lose people.